Hey folks, Mike and McGee here. In today's video, we're gonna be making beef bacon. And that's something that I have not ever eaten before, but we've got a smokehouse and we've got salt. So why not? I'm just gonna cut this belly meat off. We'll have ample amounts. There won't be no lack of product to put it lightly. So let's get into it. Let's get it cut off. Let's get it in the cooler and then let's salt and smoke it and see what Frank thinks about it. to the house with the beef bellies. Now I've never raised a beef this big. I've killed several beef and I've never seen anything like this in my life. This does not look like the belly. This looks like, well it looks like a T-bone steak. It looks like a ribeye. It looks like unbelievable. And I just don't happen to be in the mindset to take this and put it in salt and smoke it just yet. I'm gonna take this steak right here, I'm gonna throw it in a skillet, and I'm gonna fry it up. I'm gonna trim it like this. I'm gonna fry it up with some camp dog seasoning, and we're about to see if this is any good for steak. I'm going to just trim this bottom up just a little bit, get that membrane cut off, I can't help it folks. I gotta I gotta fry that up. Alright, while that is cooking on the stove, I'm going to do some exploration and see how much of that type cut I can get out of this. When you're cutting stuff on this scale, it really pays to have the 10 inch. Majority of my butchering life, I have thought that's a way overkill. Never gonna need that. Well, maybe for deer, but when you're getting into beef, it looks to me like you might need that. That's quite interesting. Quite interesting indeed. Now, as you see, this here doesn't have too many big chunks of meat in it anymore, so we're looking at more at bacon size stuff there. Oh, I'm gonna flip this up and cut down through here. See what kind of center cut we got. Now that's more bacon. That's more bacon right there. Ha <laughs> ha! I think I can handle that. I'll trim off this excess stuff that's just not what I'm looking for. Strictly exploratory right here. And that, my friend, is fun. I love this kind of exploration. I think that right there is a nice little square chunk that could be used in bacon. I think I'm gonna stop trimming him there, throw him in the salt here in a minute when I get a little more ready to go.
I'm using your knife. You may as well take a taste. Anybody want to try this steak? Here, boys, let's try this. All right. I want to know. Did all y'all get one? Mm -hmm. What do you think about it? It's really good. Tender enough, ain't it? It's got a good, really good flavor. It's got a great flavor. You got cap dog and beef. And it's really juicy. One thing about this, this is a four year old steer. You can't get that kind of flavor out of a one-year-old. But that's incredible. I don't think I want to grind those steaks. Do you? No. No. I think we in superb shape. I can still get plenty of bacon. See, this is what I saved for bacon here and here. And uh, see how that's marbly, meaty. Mm -hmm. and all that so I'll I'll cure these and probably several more like them but anytime I come across one of those it ain't going into bacon no mmm this may be called flank steak I know there is such a thing as flank steak that may be what this is yeah. all right we've got them big old bellies cut up and these are the select cuts that I have chosen to make bacon out of Obviously experimental, obviously never done it before. Maybe absolutely terrible when we get done, but there's only one way to find out. And that is get in here and do it. I pulled all my wild hog out of this salt today. So we're just gonna take these and lay them in here, cover them up with salt. Look at that, look at that. There's no way that's not gonna cure down good. Look at all that salt. Excavation. And we're gonna layer them in there. Uno, dos. And we'll put these in there. To me, I think these are gonna be the best. They have some really good type look. I believe this one right here is prime. But we'll find out. Let's plop them babies down in there. Cover it over with this Wonderful salt. People ask me every day if I reuse my salt. You see me do it right here, folks. Now there's a bunch of beef bacon in there. We're gonna probably leave that about three to four days and we're gonna hang it in that smokehouse and get it smoking. Let's do it. All right, the beef bacon. It's been in here, let's see. It's been in here about six and a half, seven days. Well, here is what it looks like now. My water faucet's being used on another project right now and it's tied up, so I just got some water in a big old pot and I'm just gonna rinse all this salt off of here. I have to say, it looks good to me. I cannot wait to fry some up. And we're gonna do that, but first, we have to smoke it for about three or four days. If I understand right, and it makes a lot of sense to me, beef needs to be smoked with a stronger tasting smoke. So I'm gonna be using the red cedar. The red cedar gives a good strong smoke. And I don't know about you, but that looks like sliced thin and fried up. I don't see how we could go wrong with that. I'm just going to finish washing her up, and we'll go to the smokehouse.
right, folks, here we are with our beef bacon. I am so excited. I look at this closely and I see a lot of intramuscular marbling. That bodes well for bacon. I mean, bacon is meat and fat, usually as much fat as meat, maybe more. Now, it's not usually yellow. This is a fairly yellow fat. It's not extreme, but it's fairly yellow because this guy lived on grass all of his life, which was four years. We only finished him out for the last couple months of his life with grain, and that really helped bring the flavor over the way we like it, and it also developed that intramuscular marbling a lot better. So I'm looking forward to getting in there, frying this up, and seeing what we got. Let's do it. This is actually the next day because Frank never showed up and I thought, well, we'll postpone it and do it the next day because surely he'll show up. And you see where Frank is? I don't either. So he never showed up. We're gonna go ahead without him, but what this did was allow me to figure out how to cook it better. Yesterday, the original, it was too salty and it didn't chew up very well. So today, I sliced it, same bacon, same piece, put it in boiling water, and I just let it boil for about 10 minutes. I took my tongs, lifted them out, dumped the water, there goes all the salt out the door. Still enough salt in there to season it. Put it back in the skillet, let it fry. We're gonna try it now and see how it goes. Each person can get one piece and we'll see. Oh, that's not, that don't count, David. All right. Let the good times roll. This is beef bacon from the big black steer, weighed 1,978 pounds. Much easier to chew. Somehow boiling it in that water took the toughness out of it. Much easier to chew. There's still some toughness in it here and there, but by and large, much easier to chew, I think. What do y'all think? Yeah, it's really good. It's got a pretty good bacon flavor. It's got the bacon flavor that we have come to love. It was smoked, cedar smoke. I really was afraid that fat would leave a terrible tallow in my mouth. It's not bad at all. Wow. What do you think, Matt? Good, bad, or indifferent? It's good. I could eat this pretty much every morning, I believe. There are parts in it. A little more chewing, but honestly, no worse than beef jerky. I mean, people like beef jerky. This here is a fat beef jerky that is flavored with the smoke so it's really like bacon very good very good frank is missing out folks i'm telling you bless his heart so a lot of people were asking for a beef bacon video and here it is it's really surpassed my expectations and i'm thinking that the different cuts are going to be different the different pieces of bacon that i cured are going to be different throughout so some may be more like jerky some may be less. I don't know, but we'll find out. Maybe I'll even bring Frank back and cook some for him so that you can see his reaction. But if he keeps acting like this, he ain't going to get none. I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do. But anyway, that's all you can say about a man when he's old, gray, and stubborn. You can't make him do nothing. But anyway, I know he's not sick. And I know that his son has come to stay with him for a little bit, and I know that's what it is. So don't worry, he ain't about to die or nothing. But that's all we've got for you today. If you get a chance to make beef bacon, definitely do it. We hope you have a great day. We'll see you on the next video.